So a very common question in exams is kind of a triangle within a triangle type question. Uh, this is an example of one of them. So you can see if you kind of make an outline of this, it turns into a, a larger triangle and then a smaller triangle within the larger triangle. And usually what happens in these cases is that the smaller triangle is similar to the larger triangle. That means it has the same angles. So I'm going to do a few examples of these types of questions. They're, they're not too difficult to solve, but it just takes a certain method of doing it. So we'll start off with this one. It says, a group of students were trying to find the distance between two trees on opposite sides of a river, using pegs, a measuring tape, and a large amount of string. They align the pegs in a particular way, take several measurements, and sketch this diagram. On the diagram, A and B are the trees, and C and D and E are the pegs. So you can see that A and B are the trees, and these are the pegs here. Now, in what way must the pegs and the trees be aligned if the students are to use these measurements to calculate the length of AB? So when I calculate the length of AB, and its question is asking us, in what way must the trees and the pegs be aligned for us to be able to calculate the length of AB? So that really depends on your knowledge of similar triangles. First of all, we want to make it into a larger triangle, uh, it's like a smaller triangle within a larger triangle. And also it's important that this smaller triangle is similar to the larger triangle. To do this, what we need to do is make sure that all of these are in line. So that has to be A, B, and C have to be in line, and A, E, and D have to be in line. But also very important is that the line segment from B to E is parallel with the line segment C to D. So if I make it into a triangle like this, well, we have to be sure that this angle is equal to this one. And the only way we can be sure of that is if the two lines are parallel. Because if the two lines are parallel, then um, these would be considered corresponding angles. If you remember from geometry, corresponding and alternate angles, if you have a line cutting across two parallel lines, then these angles here would be considered corresponding and they would be equal. Likewise, these two angles would be equal. So if, you, if, if we know that these two angles are equal to these, and that's shared by both of them, we can say for sure uh, these are similar triangles. The smaller triangle has the same angles as the larger triangles. And that's precisely what allows us to find out the distance between A and B. Because one of the properties of similar triangles is that the ratio of the corresponding sides of the triangles will always be equal. So we, we can, I can show you how we do that in, in a while. But to answer this particular question, I'll just move it down. In what way must the pegs and the trees be aligned if the students are to use these measurements to calculate the length of AB, we just say A, B, and C must be in line. Te technical term is collinear. You don't really have to remember that. Just say something like that. They must be in line. A, E, and D must be in line. So that makes it a proper triangle. And then, of course, these have to be parallel. So segment B, E must be parallel with the segment C, D. So that's all we have to uh, do to ensure that we can we, we that these are similar triangles so we can find out what the length of this is. So to go about and actually answer this we need to what we need to do really is separate out the triangles. So the easiest way to do this is to kind of take the smaller triangle out of the larger triangle and draw them out separately. That way you can see more clearly what are the corresponding sides. Because basically we're going to use the property of similar triangles that the ratio of corresponding sides are equal. So you have to be able to see very clearly what are the corresponding sides. So you can see from this I've taken the smaller triangle and drawn it out like this. And I called this the length of this x because that's what we're looking for. The length of this is 57. And then I've taken the larger triangle. And now it, this is where a lot of people mis make mistakes. They put in 48 for the length of this side, but that's only from here to here. So the length of all of this would be 48 plus x. So 
So rate 48 plus x in here. And then, of course, below the base of it is 133. So when you draw the triangles out like this in a separate way, it's very easy to see which sides correspond to which. This side corresponds to this side, and this side corresponds to this. So usually what I do when I, when I answer these, I put the x on top, right? So I put the x on top here over the, the other side of this triangle, x over 57. And then I ask myself, what corresponds to x here, 48, or x plus 48? And what corresponds to 57? 133, so I put the 133 here. This is our equation now. Uh, we've got the x's on top, so it makes it much easier to solve it. All we have to do is cross multiply. So we multiply the 133 by x, the 57 by x plus 48. Make sure to put brackets around the x plus 48. And when you're multiplying out the brackets, make sure to multiply the 57 by the 48 as well. So eventually you get this. Um, and if we solve this down, we, we eventually get x equals 36. So it's just a simple linear equation. Just solve that equation and you find out what x is. Right, so this, the next part of the question says, another group of students repeat the activity. They have a similar diagram with different measurements. Their, their measurements are BE equals 40. So that would be this part here. Uh, BC equals 9. So B to C is 9. Uh, we'll have to look at the original diagram for that part. So B to C would be 9, so this part here would be 9. But we, we just found out that this is 36. Uh, just check now. Okay, so you can see here it says, based on the value of AB that the first group got, so that was 36, what measurement will the second group have for CD? So they're looking for the length of CD. So we're going to call that X now. And the total length of C to A would be 45 because 9 plus 36 gives us 45. And so we have all the lengths of the sides drawn out here. Again, we separate the triangles. And, and again, we put X on top. So the X here over 45. So the X corresponds to 40. So you'd have 40 here. And... Uh, 45 corresponds to 36, so you have 36 here. This one is a lot simpler than the, the previous one because we want, just want to get x on its own, we just need to bring the 45 across here and multiply it by 40, so cross multiplying. So that gives us 40 times 45 over 36, which gives us 50 in the end. So x is 50, the length of CD is equal to 50. So the next question is very similar, so you've got three paths, A, B, or sorry, AE, BE, and CD have been constructed to provide access to lake from road AC as shown in the diagram. The length of the paths from the road to the lake are as follows. So these are all the details. Make sure to put these onto the diagram like I've done here. Now, explain how these measurements can be used to find the length of ED. So we want to find the length of ED. How could we use these measurements? So obviously, again, it has something to do with similar triangles. If we know that the, this smaller triangle is similar to the larger one, then we can use that property of the ratio of corresponding sides being, being equal. So we just need to prove that they are similar. So start off by saying that the angle B A B E is equal to the angle ACD. So this angle is equal to this angle. That's given in the question. Also, the angle here is shared by both the larger triangle and the smaller triangle. So we can say angle EAB is equal to angle DAC, because it's common, shared. Once you've proven that two angles are equal, then the two triangles are automatically similar. So we can say, therefore, triangle AEB is similar to triangle ADC. And now that we know that they're similar, we can say that we can use the ratio of corresponding sides to allow us to find what ED is. So, so the second part of this question asks us to find the length of ED, so actually find the length of this. So again what we do is we split the triangle into two triangles. The larger triangle would be this one, it's going to be 120 plus x, and this length here is going to be 200. And then the smaller triangle, 120 and 80. 
Now we can see clearly what are the corresponding sides. So always put the x on top. So 200 plus x. You can also do it this way. You can put this over the corresponding side on the other triangle. So 120 plus x over 120 equals 200 over the corresponding side 80. So that gives us this equation here. Again, we do the cross multiplying. And then it's just a case of simplifying it down and we get our answer. So we end up with x equals 180 meters. So let's have a look at the last question. The, the diagram shows the triangle ABC. DE is parallel to BC. The sizes of some of the angles are shown. So straight away we know these are parallel. So that means these angles are equal, corresponding angles. So I put the 70 degrees in here. Uh, now the first question is find the value of x, which is the x that we see here. So we have to find the value of x. That usually means you have to do an equation. So the only equation I can think of here is to add up the three angles and put it equal to 180. So that gives us 2x plus 3x plus 70 equals 180. If we simplify that down, we get 5x equals 110. And then... That means that x is 22, so I'll divide 5 into 110, we get 22. Right, so that answers the, that question, find the value of x. The next one, again, is kind of similar to the other questions, gives you the length of some side, so a to e is 100, so a to e is 100. Um, a to c is 130, so the, the longer side here is 130. Uh, d to e is 74, so this side is 74. And D to, uh, sorry, find the value of B, B to C. So find the value of B to C, so that would be the length of this side. So that's going to be our X. So we call that X. We split out the two triangles. Again, we put the X on top, so it's X over the corresponding side over here. So X over 74 equals 130 over 100. That's your equation. Again, pretty easy, this one, because you just want to get X on its own. It's going to bring the 74 over here and multiply it by 130. And eventually, if you work that out, you get 96.2. Okay, so I think.